Okay, welcome. Thanks for joining us and uh, especially to the folks who are able to be here on screen. It's so lovely to hear your voices, see your words in the chat and see your faces for those that are um, choosing that tonight. No, no pressure if you if that's not suiting you tonight, it's okay. And um, to folks that are joining us in this community, we extend our welcome to you if you're practicing with us after the fact on uh, the YouTube channel. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> so when this um, session is being recorded, you may be watching it at any number of times, um, but it is October 12th. <clears throat> Here I'm in uh, what's called colonially called Southern Ontario, and it's a, a very colorful time of year. So this is a time of year when all of the, not all of the, all of them, but the um, deciduous trees, not the evergreen trees, change their color, and they're. It's so beautiful. I often wonder if it was always like this, would I notice how beautiful it is or then I would just get used to it, you know? Maybe if it was always like that and then occasionally you'd have these, a few weeks of it all being shades of green, it'd be like, oh, it's so beautiful, all the green. <laughs> but anyways, I'm, it's still beautiful and enjoying the vibrancy. And I, I think it, for me, because it is impermanent, I appreciate it so much more. It's like cherry blossom season, you know, that is so ephemeral, so brief, and so wondrous because of its impermanence. And so I think a lot of us are noticing the incredible reds, orange, yellow, purples mixed with the greens and um, watching them fall. So, it's this time of year um, reminds, I'm often reminded of something that I learned, learned about, heard about some years back that I don't know how long ago. Um, I'm not a scientist, but I have read several articles on it and it appears to be a true thing that uh, I used to think that leaves change color that you know the green is changing into red or orange or something uh, apparently it's actually that those colors are already there in the leaves and that the as a tree or plant is preparing for winter uh, it draws the chlorophyll stops producing so much chlorophyll which makes the green color but it draws the chlorophyll back into the roots to survive to nourish through the winter and it's in the withdrawing that the beauty is revealed it's in that nourishing that uh, kind of for me I mean it's just a metaphor that this is how it lands for me is like sometimes there's great wisdom and in allowing ourselves you know to slow down to draw our energy in to take care to withdraw a little bit and in you know there's a, a skillfulness with this but that can reveal um, some things that were hidden. It can reveal perhaps a beauty that wasn't noticed. And um, there's a line that I, I don't know, picked up in one of my wanderings <laughs> through all these different bits of information. I can't even remember where I saw this line, but I I wrote it down and I've been saying it a lot lately of falling into the arms of the moment. And it's just so comforting that phrase to me anyways of 
Oh, just resting, falling into the arms of the moment and letting the grace, the presence of the moment support us and hold us. And of course, fall, leaves are falling, the season is fall, autumn. And yeah, uh, so as often is the case in things that are offered here, uh, uh, it's often um, poetry inspires me. And uh, the poem tonight is one called The Longest Journey by James Cruz, and that's C-R-E-W-S. If you're um, practicing with us on the YouTube recording, I'll put the, the name of that and a link to John Cruz, James Cruz website um, down below. Uh, so I'll read it again once we start practicing, but uh, I'll just read it here the first time and uh, say a bit more about it after that. So it's called The Longest Journey. Oh, in some poems, they really uh, touch my heart. So um, I might pause. The Longest Journey. You long to lead the life you love, but fear the needful voices of others crying out for you to fix their pain. It can be the longest journey to reach up, pull down the oxygen mask, and strap it to your own face, breathing in deeply before helping another. But once you do, once you feel the flow of air in your lungs, like a necessary medicine that was always available, always free, you see how life wants to fill you too. And you can refuse to be pulled back down into that tight, airless place of emergency. It is not selfish to relish your own breath, to seek only the light that feeds you. James Cruz. Mm. So this, this is just a, such a beautiful image. I, I'm just remembering a, a fellow teacher Don Mauricio talking about this uh, of, um, you know, on an airplane, how we're supposed to put our own oxygen mask on first before we help others, because then we're going to be calm and cared for and be able to help more people. And I, I recall her saying, you know, being aware of noticing the inclination. Well, maybe if I really just run around fast, I can help a lot more people first, you know, and before I pass out and it's kind of an amusing way to look at our own inclination to take care of others before we take care of ourselves and uh, as James so skillfully and wisely beautifully evokes here this longest journey I mean that's so amazing to to reach up like it's it's only this far to reach up but it can be the longest journey to reach up and pull down that oxygen mask and strap it on your own face. So what is that for us that feels like it's the longest journey? What is the, the piece of care that you need for your own being? Can we, is it really that, you know, is it really that insurmountable or can we make that longest journey to do that one thing, just that one thing to take care of ourselves. And then once you do, to feel the flow of air 
like a necessary medicine, absolutely. But as he says here, and this is one of the teachings we often hear about mindfulness of breathing, is that it's always available. Everywhere you go, in all the situations, all the positions you're in, all the places you go, all the people you're with, your breath is always with you until your last breath when it is not. And so it's it's a perfect and the body in in general with a, a, lots of different sense doors is the first foundation of mindfulness because uh, and this is one of the reasons one of many so it's always available and it's free it's a very affordable meditation tool and there's some expensive ones out there i'll tell you <laughs> i've seen some things on the market that blow my mind incredible gadgets and things and and i'm likely they help um if, if you can afford them but it these things are free and always available not only so the breath is always available and always free it's also conditioned so it can teach us so much you know when am i holding my breath uh, as some folks uh, described here before we came on the recording, noticing how the breath is affected in this moment um, and how it feels in the body, uh, depending on if there's a large or sharp sound, we might take a gasping breath uh, at times, depending on the state of mind and body, the breath might be very calm or long or slow. So it changes and is affected. And so that can teach us a lot about what's happening around us, what conditions are happening. Uh, the, the breath is... is amazing because it's um it's both conditioned affected by other things in our environment and we can affect our breath we can regulate our breath or we could say let's all take a deeper breath in and a longer breath out you know so we can have some effect on our breath in meditation practice, we try not to control our breath like doing yoga pranayama or breathing exercises. We want to let the body breathe and notice how it is. That being said, because if we try to like, I want to breathe like how a good meditator should breathe, whatever that is. Um, you know, then we're we're just adding more suffering. So in general, in meditation, we just want to let the body breathe and notice, oh, it's really tight and shallow tonight, or it's really, really painful to breathe down into the belly tonight. And um, and then we'll practice being skillful with that, being spacious with it, kind with it. Uh, and and so James goes on in this teaching in this poem of uh, the how it's not selfish to relish your own breath. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know some of us were were chatting before we we came on the recording about how we are right now and. A couple folks are feeling tired or anxious, vulnerable, um, wanting to cultivate some acceptance and equanimity with how things are. And uh, this is already starting from a place of wisdom to begin your practice. This is how I begin my practice. 
how am I? How are you, dear one? Like, like not assuming I know how I am because it's changing all the time. How are you right now? And then from that, discerning what's needed. What do you need? What do you need? Ah, needing some calm. Okay, so we bring intention, wise intention to our practice. So this is a maybe helpful. Um, I find it helpful to start with a little check-in. How am I? What do I hope to cultivate in this practice? What's my intention? And then this is more likely to point us in that direction. Um, I might just mention, uh, some of you already heard this this morning, but uh, this was another teaching that happened for me recently with nature that, um, I think it was yesterday, might have been Monday, <laughs> I don't know, recently, I my mind was in a really big snarl my heart and mind like very painful um and a lot of fatigue and sleeplessness for a few nights from other conditions and um and then kind of awake from 3 30 uh, onward in the morning and uh so the, the next day yeah so i was just in a really knotted mind states and went to the river and uh so when in doubt get outside <laughs> bottom line <laughs> just like as a little default make a post-it note when in doubt get outside there's always support and teachings there even if you just stick your face in a open a window there's something there for us so I went to the river and uh I saw there uh where I had previously thrown a big branch into the river that we had cut and I thought it would just float down river it did not it got snarled up on the stuck on the rocks there and was there for a couple of weeks while the while the water was um at that level and when I came back to it now, maybe a few weeks later, it was a big mess. So all the, every little bit that floated down river since then in that area got stuck on that big branch and got quite swampy. It was like pretty mucky. It took me quite a while to untangle it and, and like, you know, all the grass and all the leaves and mud, very muddy, uh, a bunch of other branches all piled up on it. And it became like a big swampy snarl, which of course was exactly like what was happening in my mind at the time. Thank you, River. And so I got in the river, I took my shoes off and got in the river and just spent some time unsnarling it pulling it apart, got myself a bit muddy, but it was worth it. And uh, just untangling it piece by piece, kind of just enjoying how visceral it was instead of just all blah, 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 listening to the mind. Um, eventually the, there was clear water, clear seeing, like I, it really untangled my heart and mind. And uh, but it just was such a metaphor, such an image of how there could be one thing happen, like one trigger, one there's one thing, one branch we throw into the river, one thing that isn't just how we want it. And then we just start everything starts to pile up onto it. And it's like, I'm always going to be this way. I've always been this way. I'm always going to be this way. They are certainly always been this way. And they're always going to be this way. And we just reinforce that position and back it up and pile it up till it's a big swampy snarl. Um, and so there's lots of ways to practice with these mind states. But first of all, Get outside if you can 
and uh, see what the leaves can teach us and the, the river, the big sky. And um, if you're not able to get outside, then make this longest journey and reach up for your oxygen mask and um, connect with your breath. So let's uh, let's practice now. As you begin to settle into your posture for practice, please take into account how are you, what do you need? Perhaps you want to dim your light, turn away from the computer. Um, you might like to lay down, stand up. You could do walking practice <clears throat> where you are. And do you need any other cushions or warmth or shawls? And just as you're arriving to meet yourself, greet yourself at the door, see if you need any other movements, perhaps some stretching or touch or self massage or just one of my favorite touches is just holding my face like this. If your eyes are strained from being on a computer or de electronic devices a lot through your day, you might want to cup your hands over your eyes. Or rest a hand on heart or belly. So just to break out of any molds we might have of how a meditator should be, which sometimes can be a little rigid or tight. So let yourself just, just meet yourself with care in this moment. And then if and when it feels helpful to you. Inviting some stillness. So even if you're continuing to add some movements, can there be an inner stilling, inner quieting, settling? And I take um, a good, often at least five minutes to just allow myself to arrive. Meeting, meeting myself in this moment. I do this by scanning my attention down the body Just feeling into the muscles of the face and any tension that's here, perhaps widening the space in the center of the forehead. Seeing if any tension in the area of the jaw or lower half of the face? Is it helpful to let some of that go in this moment or is it helpful to keep some? Letting the shoulder blades, the shoulder bones feel heavy and let them slide down the back, feeling the neck lengthen. Weighted down through the elbows into relaxed hands. If 
feeling the length of the spine supporting you, whether you're reclining or standing or sitting. And then relaxing the front of the torso to whatever degree is comfortable for you tonight, the heart center, the belly center. Inviting some softness, some space. Soft belly. Feeling the weight of the hips and pelvis. And the touch of the legs or feet with the support that you're on. Perhaps inviting the teachings of the trees as we feel a sense of rootedness. We're very gently drawing our attention inward, nourishing self-care and awareness. The way the trees are doing at this time of year. Revealing a different kind of beauty. And this poetic teaching from James Cruz, The Longest Journey. You long to lead the life you love, but fear the needful voices of others crying out for you to fix their pain. It can be the longest journey to reach up Pull down the oxygen mask and strap it to your own face, breathing in deeply before helping another. But once you do, once you feel the flow of air in your lungs, like a necessary medicine, that was always available, always free. You see how life wants to fill you too. And you can refuse to be pulled back down into that tight, airless place of emergency. It's not selfish to relish your own breath, to seek only the light that feeds you. So for these next few minutes of silence, we'll practice together and you could either just rest with this each breath or stay more open, just resting with the feeling of the ground supporting you. So choose which, which support is most nourishing for you tonight or today, whenever you're practicing. The ground sensations or the breath.
always available, always free. And for all of us, there's times when attention is drawn to other sounds or sensations, worries, plans. And we just include that with our care. Gently noticing and letting it pass through. Allowing ourselves to rest again with the support that is here for you. Just by being present and being still and quiet, you're already giving yourself such a deep, priceless gift. Accepting how it is. And seeing that how it is, is arising and passing, breath by breath, moment by moment.
And as we gently draw attention inward, cultivating this kindness and stillness, what beauty is revealed? Self-compassion, equanimity, It's not selfish to relish your own breath. And as we come towards the ending of this practice, is there something you would like to take forward as a gift that was revealed for yourself of some way of strapping on your own oxygen mask, some deep attending that is being asked for. And as I ring the bowl three times, just rest with that intention for yourself or that 
insight, that wisdom of care that is being revealed for you. So thank you for joining us in this uh, practice and I hope you feel some restoration or some ease, some presence and uh, look for the teachings of the trees if you if you have that availability. <laughs> <laughs>